when I heard him how he talked to Everlast, he was in his, you know what I mean? <laughs> but when he got shot, we got him out of jail. And when it was Pac coming and jumping on a death row, it's you aggressive. could hear it. He understood. Yeah. Then he got it. Just wait. What, no hold on. What's, the, no what's the most you ever spent on jewelry? Oh. It'd have to be the plain Jane presidential role. Talk, talking to the uh, Michael a little bit more. Oh, it would have to be the the Roly, the presidential plain Jane. You know the V V serial, the new one. Yeah, I got v, you. Because it's X Y Z. So yeah, you know the new ones. Forget it. And uh, uh, that my Mill Gauss. That's ninety five hundred. I have another Rolex. Jeez. And then, uh, of course, I got a Sea Dweller that I got that on, used for fourteen. But that was like I was, I was getting those transplant diamonds and gun checks, you know, man. I was that punk rock, that rock music check, yeah, you know, man. I yeah. mean, the K rock. And yeah. you was flossing on them. Yeah, I was doing the most, man, because of the radio money. Uh, you know, and radio money is different from just regular backpack underground rap money. Well, radio money is different now <laughs> than it was then, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Was that, what, what do you think was your favorite, like, part of, of the era when, when I guess, radio was radio, like the K- K rock era. I, I think I think um the DJs just mashing up the rap with the rock and also with the alternative and just um you know the 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 brothers are also getting down with the rock music too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And uh there's a lot of also Afro punk rock mm. that I, I didn't know about that. I didn't they, know about there's that a either. whole other world. They got their own world, man. Mm. I didn't even know about that. And you know, man, it's pretty cool, man, because you know, it's just so interesting, man. I just love that shit. You yeah. Know what I'm is it and is it the fact that people mash up different styles and you got the Thank you. Yeah. It reminds me of New York, like, you know, um, late seventies, early eighties, New York, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. CBGBs. Cause you were born in New York, right? Yeah, about there in Brooklyn, you know, uh Fort Greens, Greenpoint, and hospitals. So um my mother, you know, like I said, the English were getting crazy in the early 70s out there in New York. So, and then um heroin when it when it um, you know, when it was introduced to the streets out there, forget it. It was yeah, like it was devastating. the hookers and the heroin out there just ran everything. And then the South Americans with the dope money, they were buying their way out of everything. And the dudes, mm. the, the law enforcement locals didn't like that shit. Yeah. So it was crazy. So um they couldn't stop it. So when you can't beat them. You see what I'm saying? And so when my mom saw that shit, she was like, nah, -uh, not my son. And that's when we bolted out here to the to Gold LA. Coast. The, yeah, the Gold Coast. Just in time for the crack epidemic. <laughs> the, the, the Gold Coast. And then later, then a, a couple years later, the crack hit. Uh, so you see how the devil don't waste no time. You no know escape. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He don't waste no time. So, yeah. Oh, man. What, what, when you... Or, wait, let me introduce the show. <laughs> word up, B-Boys over here talking word. <laughs> this is Craig that hip -hop, Smith. That street shit, because we street niggas. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. This is so, Craig Smith. Welcome Soul Assassins. To Soul Assassins. Welcome to another episode of Fresh Era Talks. I am Craig <laughs> Smith, here with the incomparable, the one, the only Soul Assassin original, Funk Dubious, <laughs> Supreme <laughs> Sun Doobie in the building. Word up, man. Thank you for having me, Craig. Thank you. No brother. doubt. You were, you were uh, probably, like, you were one of the first episodes that we did of fresh era yeah, yeah man. man i mean thank you it was an honor man because y'all saw what you was doing with the ogs on the hip-hop tip yeah. i was like yo i gotta jump in there man wherever i fit in man let me get up in that yeah, yeah and definitely. tomahawk was here oh man tomahawk is the best i love his spirit if anytime he's with me i feel safe mm, because he's, he's like he's like human sage human you know what sage. i'm saying yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying tomahawk he's like he's like um he's just He's so calm, but he's just like powerful, like thunder. Mm. You know was that was saying? that a? Uh, how did y'all complement each other as a as a as a group? Like, were you like one end of the spectrum and he was the other end? Yeah, because he was on that Indian, and I was on that Indian too, and we could relate. What you, you, know? you mean by that? Because I'm I'm Puerto Rican, so um, like I got I got like I know I don't look it, but I got African, Arawak, Indian, and I got um Spaniard in me. Got you. So, you know what I'm saying? I got all that. I mean, my, my grandfather's black, Puerto Rican. You know what I'm saying? He's coffee complexion. Right, you know what right, I'm right. saying? So, you know, my mother's milky white. 
But, you know, on the, on the island, it's different because on the island, you got all spectrums. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was interesting, you know, I mean, not to talk like a geneticist. No, no, I'm talking eugenics, you know, I'm talking know, I'm no, you know, an anthropologist <laughs> using these big words with five-syllable words. No, it was just like, um, you know, the Spanish tethers everything together. Mm. You know what I'm so saying? So people assume it's all one thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So Spanish Harlem, New York, Puerto Rico, and the migration from all the Puerto Ricans from Puerto Rico to New York, Yeah, all the Puerto Ricans to Miami. You, yeah. you feel me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you see what I'm what, saying? What was the... Uh, what? So Afro-Puerto Rican moving to New York, what was that like for your grandfather? It was hard. He changed his name. I found out. It broke my heart. He had to do it for political reasons. Come on, son. You can't go out there with a real Puerto Rican name. So we got to, we got to, like, you know, we got to switch it up. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? And he was ready for them to, for them switching up on him, too. Yeah. Because he didn't know what to expect in New York. All he knew was Puerto Rico. That's all he knew. Right. And um, it's kind of it's kind of nerve wracking or it's kind of, you get nervous. It gets you nervous when you go into a new land with a new life with yeah. your family. Right. You know, and, and my grandfather had like, he had like five daughters and one son. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, so come yeah, on, yeah. man. Everybody, he had to have the, the, everybody the, the trying to beat your kid me. up. Everybody <laughs> yeah. trying to bang your, your daughter or your wife. You know, because my grandmother was a fox when she mm. was young. You know, Puerto also Rican from Puerto women. Rico? Also Puerto Rico as gotcha. well. Both Puerto Ricans. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, so like he moved everybody. Yeah, everybody. Because gotcha. he, had, he, had he had a farm out there. And he had to store, but something happened where um, his 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 grandpa died, and his family didn't let him take hold of the land, and they didn't have at then in those days they didn't prepare a will, and um, there was a lot of jealousy. And when you jeal it, when family relatives get jealous, they don't prepare nothing, and mm -hmm. they let the family fight for it. But see, this is also that like intergenerational immigrant black folks like so you just know not because knowing you and me how are the same you see yeah. what i'm saying but if you explain it to the other folks they won't get that yeah because they, the assumption is why don't you just pull yourself from your bootstraps like well my bootstraps came Craig, with like no on, will son. came Word. with no legacy come no on, inheritance son. nothing are you kidding me right because then the brothers are going to look at me in the hood and they're going to say well how did that how did that work out or how did that you know what i'm yeah. saying and then you out there explaining yourself so that's what it was and, uh, you know, um, my mom, um, um, she had to raise my uncle and raise her, her sisters as well. Oh, wow. And um, that's when she met my father, go figure. And he was also from Puerto Rico, too, because yeah. she was from San Tulce and he was from Carolina and Carolina. And um, when they got together, um, he was working at a club at the time as a painter. He would decorate the lights, everything, because yeah. he was an artist. And um, she was a seamstress. But then um, she went and got her degree and became a, a registered nurse. And she took that degree and came out here and started working for Kaiser out here, right here, right, right in my backyard um, for the last 35 years. She had to do what she had to do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And she supported my music, everything. You know what I'm saying? She bought me my two turntables, my, my 1200s first. And, um, you know, she let me have my little breakdance party with all my friends on the block. And we did the pop in. And, um, you know, I tried to do what I, I do. And then that's when I met Muggs, you know, from mm -hmm. Cypress Hill. And then um, after that, you know, um, working with him at that time, he was um, in 7A3, the yeah. rap group. Oh, yeah. With and that's where you started B, rapping. Ge um, Geffen Records. And man, he he turned the lights on for me. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, wait, before we get into, in, into too much hip hop, because I was, I was, we were talking to Mellow Man Ace. You know, he's Cuban. Yeah. And he Mellow was, is the second person he introduced me to after Muggs. Well, you know, like he was talking about being a kid in LA as a Cuban kid. Yeah. And having to fight. Was it like where was it a similar thing for you being Puerto Rican in LA? It, it, it was it was because they thought I was white at one time, and when they saw when they when I the way I carry myself and the way I talk, they were like, "Oh, there was one of us." All right, just leave it alone. He he asked the way he moves, the way he talks, the way he's yeah. silent. Is he he one of us? Chill. Right. And they, they felt they they just um you know um. It was weird. It was just like they embraced me. Mm. And then when I took the embracement, the rest was history. And um, but um, 
the other Spanish kids got jealous because I ran with the brothers. And um, that's the only thing. If you run with the brothers, they get jealous. They usually don't mess with you. But if they see you running with the brothers, they're going to mess with you because it's politics. In LA is crazy because I saw them mess with Melo. I know how I know what Melo's talking about. Yeah. But it's it, but I was a Hollywood kid. But in Hollywood, it's not like that. It's only like yeah. that south of the 10. If you south of the 10, sorry, homie, it's like that. Yeah, I just moved to LA three and a, three years ago. And so that was the first thing I noticed because I'm from Kansas City. So back home. So like, you know what I'm saying? So well, you know LA is so big. Well, it's different though. Like back home, like I needed my thing on me like all the time like my my kids would be like why you got your gun on you in wow. the house like i needed it on me but like when i got out here i live in like korea town nah, so i don't, don't need it, it. Don't but need what it. i noticed even when i would go to like some hood activities it's more the the street activities are more organized more listen, political listen craig because i'm gonna be real with you because we're gonna i, I keep it a, a buck i'm gonna keep it a stack with you I, you know i can't lie I'm on this thing where I'm on a mission from God. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So with this hip hop thing and I belong to a royal priesthood. Mm. Listen, the brothers in the hood, the guns they got, mm-mm. it's nothing. What, it, you don't see it on the internet. Yeah, You don't see it on with the muzzles and the silencers and all that. When they clear a block, you and me have seen that. They haven't yeah. seen it. We've seen it. And, when, and they don't just clean a block. They stop. Then they come back and clean. Yeah, they get the job done. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? They check everybody out. And they not wait, they don't run out, they don't run from police. They're not scared of nobody. They're more heartless. The guns they got, they're not handguns that we carry up yeah, in, the, gl- in the club. They got shit that's from the military. Right. And it's shit that when you hit the floor, you're not getting back up. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? And see, like that's the that's you see what I'm saying? Now right. I just took the conversation to a whole other. You right, see what I'm saying? Right, because it's not just because like aimless from that. violence. I'm from right. Brooklyn. You from that, or Kansas City. You see what I'm saying? Where dudes come out there and they do that horror movie shit. Yeah. With that, you know what I'm saying? And then and these they kids, mean it. 14, 15 years old. That's you, the most dangerous ones. You see what I'm saying? And we were doing, and we seen this before they had the. The the um the trap mask on right. the, the drill um the drill trap mask on, and that's what I'm saying. The flips, mm. all that. You know what I'm saying. You yeah. and me, we we come from that. So in coming from that, it's interesting. Like how many, uh, I forget who uh, Drez was talking about. Like he came from so many street activities that he wasn't about to be on a record glorifying it knowing that he could get like because he was already locked up at a, at a certain point why did y'all lean more into like party music coming from where you came from mugs told me that my power comes from my lightheartedness mm. from being positive Word. he said dudes you just have this energy i create the energy in whatever room or moment i'm in That's with real. my voice i mean it's almost supernatural and 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 when he's told me like that I couldn't understand it when he told it to me in that time. How old were you? I was, um, I must have, geez, dude, you were 19. I just graduated high school. Batman came out, the first Batman. Remember Michael Keaton? <laughs> Michael Keaton. 89. And uh, Jack yeah, Nicholson. Yeah, yeah. At the, at the Man Chinese. Dude, I'm the too premiere. young for that shit. I Remember the premiere? Yeah. Born then. So it just came out right at the same month that I graduated. Uh-huh. So it was like June, July, you know, gotcha, high school. Gotcha, gotcha. You remember what I was saying? And Brett and Sean from my, from my, um, for my gift, my graduation gift, they took me to the movies. Wow. So anyways, man, when Muggs told me this, man, um, he had bought me this computator because we were working on the album. And he told me all the ideas, I want you to put it on the computator. And, um, you know, so we can use it, you know? Hey, that's a gift. Having somebody like that, that just won't let you I love, not man. be Oh, your- I had love. People loved me. And, and but, but, um, the attention also that it, it, it attracted, yeah. it also attracted jealousy and envy with that. How did so? How do you balance that? Like at, in that, as a eight, 17, 18 year old dude, you in hip hop, you from where you, you know what I'm saying? You from the shit. Like, how do you balance? Like, I'm trying to be positive right now, but this mother, you know what I mean? No, I know what you're saying. You know how you do it. Um, um, it, it's a psychic thing. Um, you know, you got to beware of psychic attacks because there's a little, there's a bunch of voices in our head, 
But the only voice we're really trying to listen to is the God voice. The God voice that tells us to make good decisions. That's real. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And we got to listen to that voice. It's the, it's the voice that told you to put on that burgundy shirt today. It's what the, the culture voice that club. told you to, you know what I'm saying? That told me to put on the Soul Assassins piece and the and the shirt with the hat, yeah. you know, and the Ray Bans on. You know, it's the for it's the voice that loves you. It yeah. loves you. It loves all of us. And that's the voice you listen to. It's the voice of home. You know what I'm saying? It's the voice you come from that tells yourself, I'll never forget you. It's right. where you got me to. And always, that's it, man. Yeah. I always look at it as like intention. You know what I mean? Like there, because somebody said something when I was younger, it really fucked me up. There was like, you know, the voice in your head, that's not actually you. No. That's that's your that's a voice in your head. You just think thoughts, but what you choose to actually put your your mind and your behavior toward isn't doesn't have to be the things that you hear on a constant. Day. Listen, man, I understand, Craig. We 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 listen to the radio, mm. we watch the TV, we read books, we get ideas. I get it. Yeah. I get it. But that's not you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's not Or at least you. it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. And, and it can't be at the same time. Yeah. You know, um, you, you, like I said, you, your own man. And I, and I seen, you know, that's what I'm saying. The maturity. Uh, I love hip hop because you hear it through the music and um, the music I did with um, DJ Cheap Shot and the album that we did, man, um, man, it, the, the, the um, do be or not to be, um, man, it was an honor working on that because it taught me about myself you know, it showed me I haven't lost it. It also showed me that um, I'm very versatile and very talented um, and, um, and, and don't take it for granted. Mm. You know, we all talented, but talent doesn't mean anything, Craig, unless we make the right choices. Talk and about that's it. the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, um, uh, talented people in this world, but it doesn't mean nothing. Mm. Um, um, th you know, there's a lot of people who got talent. You see it all the time. You know, Showtime at the Apollo 24-7 all day. But it doesn't mean anything, brother, unless you make it right and make the right decisions. Yeah. And make it count. Just make it count. Make it count. Make it count. You know, when you're, I was telling uh, one of my relatives the other day. Cause they've been going, they've been trying to make their business work. And I heard somebody say, it's me a clock. Like what time is it right now? You trying to, you, if you're worried about when you're supposed to be doing something or how you're supposed to make something happen or what people are going to think it's me a clock, dog. Like, <laughs> what, what are we talking about? Every yeah. moment is your moment. If you, right. if you, if you can see the next step, that's, that's some, some powerful. And you said mugs pulled you aside, gave you that guidance. You started, to light up the room, to bring the energy with Funk Dubious. He turned on the lights for me. Yeah. Also, too, Craig, I was going to tell you, too, um, I've been around the world 10 times. And um, when I was over in Russia, um, they beat up Americans out there pretty badly. Ooh. So that also helped me, too. So when I got out here, when they be, try to beat, when they tried to beat me up out here, they didn't even touch me because I'd already got the training on the other side of the world. Been through the gulag. You see what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So they don't tell you about that part, too. And not all, also to say um, brothers ain't brothers all over the world. You may think that, but um, sometimes they'll side with the system instead of siding with the rebels. And and then you kind of find yourself in that in between, and you have to be smart yeah, enough to negotiate yourself out of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's how it is. What's hold on? What's the? Uh, tell me. So you <laughs> tell me. You, you've been you've been around the world ten times. A lot of this was touring. What's the the not the craziest place, but the most unexpected like atmosphere around the world? Man, let me tell you, Craig. They've put me in places. I'm, I'm, I'm positive they have only sent Funk Dubious at no other rappers <laughs> for you know. They need somebody in Siberia who we gonna yeah say? exactly for diplomatic <laughs> reasons. And you know, I don't say anything. I don't complain. I just go there and win the hearts and minds, and I just make peace with them. And I just tell them, yeah. I can't wait when I see them back when we're back in the states, and I can do the same for them. Got you. You see what I'm saying? And we're over there. Um, sharing um, the hip hop vibes over in America. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because once you leave this place, this sanctuary called the United States, you're on your own. You're literally yeah. on your own. Especially in some parts of the world where it's yeah. like, they don't care about none of that. You don't realize <laughs> it until you're in another airport in another language. Nothing's in your, and They're not anything could happen and you're on 
your own. And that's when you say uh, the God is in you mm-hmm. is, is it, that's when you realize there's a God in you. Yeah. Well, God and Google. I went to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went to Paris and this was the first True. time, like I went to Paris earlier this year, my first time out of the country. I got on the plane and our stop was in Copenhagen. Beautiful. And they uh they get on the uh, announcement on the plane, like, you know, the stay in your seats, all of this. But it's not in English. It's like they speak in Dutch and, and German and shit. And this is my first time understanding what the rest of the world must mean about Americans. Cause I was like, nigga, speak English. Don't y'all know an American is on the flight? Like, True. what the fuck? And this is my first time being like, oh, I'm ignorant. No, <laughs> no, no, no. So it's totally cool, normal but. because, like I said, we stick out over there. Yeah. We stick out. And and like I said, um, my mother raised me to love everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, um, um, we had a multi-diverse family, multicultural, so um, all different tongues, all different walks of life. And our focus wasn't to judge, it was to understand. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I used to hang with a lot of five percenters when I was young. Oh, and shit. we always was, was taught, and five percenters know what I'm talking about, knowledge and wisdom always brings yeah. forth understanding. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So with that knowledge I got, my wisdom, which was my mother, and then with the understanding from the hip hop, forget it, 360. Mm. Yeah. So you already know. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Thank you, Craig. Yeah. That's Man, it. Look, thank uh but wait, what was the most unexpected environment you were in overseas? Oh man, that would have to have been Bratislava. Bratislava. Yeah, Bratislava was I was didn't it understand that. Was it was it crazy. It was um the, the bouncers said, do not touch anybody's hand. If you do, they're gonna pull you in. They're gonna pull you in. And these guys, they were German. They looked like angels, man. They, they, they look they look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh they had all they t-shirt. do is work out. They were ripping out their clothes. And they were my bodyguards, and they were just like, We know who you are, son doobie. We're here to protect you. You're supposed to get on stage. But listen, there's no there's no backstage. So we got to walk you through the crowd. Oh, and it's sold out. And they said, don't grab. They're going to try to. And I just had my hat down and I just see these hands going like this and and all and everyone just trying to grab my shoulder. Just, you know, and I and, and something said, don't look up until you see the stage. And that's when I see the stairs. And that's when I look up. And when I get on stage, man, it's just pandemonium everything i mean these are the kids of of swiss bankers of the parliament of kids from that took the train all the way from paris they came all the way as far as the canary islands telling me son doobie we came to see you and it's just a weird feeling because i'm I'm, the glory belongs to the most high i'm not i'm not i I, i'm just happy just to be a a, um, an mc but but you was in the position you know, it's your moment and you Listen, up there. Craig, wow. I'll tell you, man, it's a, it's the most amazing feeling to just when you see them rap your song and you're not even singing it. They're singing wow. it for you. And you don't know what to do with yourself because you come from this little neighborhood in Los Angeles and you know once this tour is over, it's back to reality. Mm. And um you wish you could take it with you home. Yeah. So, Gosh. do you carry a lot of those memories? Like you could, well, you, yeah. You wish you could show the 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 lady at the bank when you take the when you take your tour money and show her that shit. She could be like, "Gia, <laughs> what do you, you know mean? What I'm you saying? have thirty No, but don't get me wrong. The deposit. money's enough. But no, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You want to share, but I guess that's why we got TikTok and social media and the Facebook and now. Stuff. Yeah, like how and much Twitter? Of, how yeah. much of that do you think got actually videotape? Like how much of that do you have? Man, I'm sure somebody got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Documentation, you know? <laughs> so I'm just like, shit, you know, my DJ, my MC, my co-MC, you know, of course, mm. Tamahawk, DJ Ralph M. Yeah. So it's like. But it wasn't normal to like just, uh, not, it, it was normal to have a video camera, but it wasn't like normal to like we do now. No, man, just, we've been doing this, Craig, so long before the internet. Right. Remember, man, 92 we were we were doing i mean i've been doing this since i was 14 13 years old and it wasn't you know when i met mugs at 16 
And then we just started Funk Dubious at 19. Mm -hmm. And then the, I mean, from 16 to 19 was the pre-Cypress stuff. And then by 19, that's when I started hanging. Um, that's what Everlast took me under his wing. Mm. Um, you know, Muggs was like, you go with Everlast, you know, because wow. Everlast to me was amazing. I mean, uh, introduced me to Ice-T and then after Ice-T, forget it. Ice-T to me was like a god, you know, I yeah. mean. Ice T, forget it. Because he yeah. had been around during like the was it Radiotron? Yeah, forget it. I was at the Radio Trine all the time and DJ Glove, forget mm -hmm. it. The Glove, you know. So you know, I keep a CD, a CD, a DVD with me, or I have Break In, Beach Street, Star Wars, and Wild Style all on one yeah. CD. That's my holy grail. <laughs> That's dope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know, I'm a b boy. B boy is my religion. And I belong you. to that royal priesthood. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. I can't take the credit because no priest can take the credit. Yeah. Do you understand? So I, I, I'm just an instrument, and he uses me as that instrument. Got you. You know what I'm saying? And it's only, it's only that I've been because of him that I've been able to live so long and persevere. Mm. And nothing's wrong with me. I'm healthy. And yeah. knock on wood, we're still going through the pre-COVID. So. You know, yeah, man, post, post, but rest post in peace, COVID. everyone. Right. Rest in peace, not to take away from nothing from everyone because we don't know what holds for us tomorrow. Man, we made it through a whole pandemic. Man, we made it though. You made it through you. Come on, let's put it, put it there, man. Come on. <laughs> made it through a whole Preach. pandemic. Then been through, uh, you done went around the world 10 times, crack epidemic, heroin epidemic pandemic we've been through it all <laughs> we see and we come from that they don't come from that talk about it come on you it's know what i'm built saying? for this built for this we wasn't scared as well should have been more uh, more people should have been scared probably you know don't take it for granted right. man you know i love everybody man that's why i say man you know um you know like i said i learned everything man um zulu nation taught me a lot um rock steady crew uh, taught me a lot um the syndicate ice tea the syndicate taught me a lot yeah and um now just being here as an active hip-hop member soul assassins is just amazing yeah. you know what i'm saying and to be here to sit with you craig and just talk about this knowing um we went through um the hip-hop uh, um, and the music error, the drug error, the right. political error, the pandemic error. Yeah. Talk to me, man. All what are it. we going to, what's next? This episode is brought to you by Little Giants, Giant Shorties. I've got a few kids in my house and I can tell you their energy is something that you can't suppress. When it comes to expressing themselves, you got to let them shine. They are the culture, so why not let them dress like it? ShoppingWeAreLittleGiants.com gives you access to plenty of options to styling your little shorty with the same authenticity you reserve for yourself. Find t-shirts, hoodies, shoes, onesies, and a whole lot more. Honestly, you'll be jealous that they don't have your size. WeAreLittleGiants.com has the designs that speak to the love we've had for hip-hop since we were little shorties ourselves. You'll be passing along your passion for the culture when you see your little giant rocking all of the gear at WeAreLittleGiants.com. I hope and we it's, still I hope it's here. The, the thrive era. I hope it's the like we are healthy and go to therapy era, because Jesus. And we and we and we went through everything. The stuff the stuff that they don't even have names for. And then look at me, the jerks, the 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 a holes, the 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 racism, yeah. the racist, you still the here? prejudice, everything. We did it, man. Right. You know, and we still, you know, I mean, because the devil don't waste no time. So, yeah. so you know, we're ready for when they my, switch up on us, too. My theory is that hip hop will save the world. Thank you. And, and I say that because, like, it it, it, it dawned on me when we were uh, we were doing this event where we were honoring Grandmaster Flash. And he was talking. And we all know this is hip hop aficionados. But, like, when he started doing what he was doing like doing this uh he calls it the quick mix theory when he was taking two records and putting them together with the beat breaks it did it dawned on me in that moment oh he was taking disco he was taking soul he was taking you know whatever he could get his hands on and that blended everything together in a similar way like hip-hop has always been the thing that brings like anybody can be a part of this if they want to true Word. You know what I mean? And Word. but that that ideology, like you th think about the teacher, like KRS One, what he tries, what he's always tried to do has been to make it make people see that this is more than just the music. 
This is more than just the the clothes. This is more than just what you see. When I when I was a child, like, and I mean, when I really mean, like, when I thought like a child, I saw Run DMC on Joan Rivers in '83. Then I said I wanted to go to the clubs. Then I saw the MC and DJ, and I said I wanted to do that. I heard Schooly D, PSK, and I heard Davy D from Def Jam. And um, I was listening to KDAY 1580 AM. And MTV was the holy grail. And I was going to a club called Osco's and across the street from the Beverly Centers. And the Rolling 60 Crips were the active gang at that club. So that's what I learned from that at that time. Then when I went to New York, I started hanging around in Spanish Harlem and I saw the clubs over there, Latin quarters. And that's when I was introduced to Zulu Nation, Ball Busters, Latin Kings. And that was different. That took me back as well. Then when I got to Chicago, that was different then because Brett had introduced me to Barry Hankerson and with Barry, Barry um, is from Detroit, but um, Barry has ties in also Chicago, right. and he was showing me um, the Chica- everything in Chicago, and that's when um, he took me to Stony Island, and he showed me all the black businesses there too, and I always was interested in um, businesses that were in the hood, and I like that, you know, um, the the hood that would just um, invest in the hood hood people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far as um, investing in your own self. And that was it, man. And that's what it was. I was always about elevating and um, building up people. That's it. Yeah. Always, always. So that's, you know, that's that's what it was all about. But I never forgot to have fun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when we look at um, um, lyrics like um, from the lyrics of Biggie Smalls or the lyrics of Old Dirty Bastard yeah. or the lyrics of just, um, you know, just, you, you know, that that um, rap in Duke, da ha da ha or even um, Craig Mack when he was when he was doing when he was easy and troop. You know, a zoom, 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 oh, a zoom, 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 dun, 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 pa. You know, man, I mean, forget it, man. Those were the, you know, and this cut's got flavor. Dum, dum, dum. Or let's not forget um, JVC Force, um, Strong Island. Ooh, 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 Strong Look, you're Island. You're giving me a whole lot to go Google right now. Yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Because we lived it and, you know, um, I kind of feel like I'm the Bob Lazar of hip hop because I've been in this top secret, you know, world. But when I'm now I'm speaking about it, no one will no one will claim it. Mm, no one will claim you, it. Hold on, what you mean? Like, like no one will, no one will, will well, um, everyone will just shush. That's it. Everyone uh, will just shush. Not to say yeah, that they weren't there as well. The everyone just hushes up. Yeah, because you got you, you're the 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 keeper. They won't talk about what's in the hangar. Uh, you see, see what, what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, yeah. And we come from that. You know, God bodies. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, the the records, the culture, the language. You know, the dancing. I mean, the behavior, the everything, man, that's from the culture. Yeah. We from that. You know what I'm saying? The graffiti, all of that. Right. And all of it says something about a different ty- a different aspect of the experience. You know, like you b-boying is, is an expression, but it's an expression that you can't necessarily like manufacture based on somebody that just think it looks cool. Thank you. Exactly. Because like you said, it's a whole, it's a whole like, ethos around it and another thing hip-hop taught me to respect my brothers and sisters Mm -hmm. all over the world that we honor we are all musicians and we should all we are all worthy of that respect and we should all respect each other as artists who would you say outside of soul assassins outside of rhyme syndicate outside of the people that you've worked with and came up with who do you have like mad respect for that you wish you could tell them I would have to say Rock Kim mm. and, and Slick Rick. Okay. Slick Rick, Rock Kim. And I've already told another person. I, I I'm sorry. There's three. One more. Uh, Grand uh, uh, Grand Poobah Maxwell. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Friend and I've already show, told Grand Poobah. What up? Yeah, Grand Poobah. Word up, man. And and um, those three right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, forget it, man. 
Yeah. What yeah. does Slick Rick mean to you? Man, Slick Rick, forget it. Slick Rick means to me um, when he first did the show, um, the show was one of the first vinyls that DJs were trying to grab when they got their 1200s. Gotcha. And when the show came out, um, it, um, th there was not a record shop. It was sold out everywhere. And you would literally have to put your name on a list to get that vinyl. Gee, like a pair of Jordans. Exactly. Jeez. And it was, it was, um, it was, um, uh, um, he was part of the group called Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh Crew. Mm -hmm. And when he, and when he did that song, forget it. That yeah. song was, um, you know, that was my, my schooling, my, my junior high and yeah. my high school and forget it. That was, forget it because when that song came out, my fingertips were filled with pilot ink. And I had carried a black book and spray cans, and we just used. Um, I think uh, we we used uh, Dutch Boy and uh, um, um, Krylon. Yeah, at to, that time. Yeah, just for writing and you. stuff like that, for piecing. And um, I was doing pieces over here at Pan Pacific you know, oh, back in wow. the days with the homies. And I remember running with running with uh, those guys. I remember WCA Pyro. And um, wow. you know those types, but I also remember Kelly from WCA, Third Rail, West Coast artists. Yeah, and I also rem I remember a lot. Gallo from Second to None. Mm. Also remember uh, Pablo. Um, I mean, a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and a lot of writers. You know that now. How do I know? You that? know now that now they're in the in the music business. Oh, Lethal was talking about Lethal. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Lethal. I went to junior high with them. Lethal used to write as well, and. Yeah. Um, you know, Lethal's in a talented motherfucker too. So, you know, I can't say nothing, brother. Lethal, we went to junior high and he used to flick my ears. So, yeah, man, because I, I mean, I still got those big ears, man. You know what I'm saying? So, that's it. it, man. So, I love Lior, man. I love Lethal. And Lethal worked with his father, worked with Dougie Fresh before anybody. Yeah, he you was know saying, what I'm it, saying? Yeah. So, I uh, forget. And Lethal was a beatbox. He used to beatbox for me when I used to freestyle. Wow. So, I used to battle guys in school. And I used to battle, um, you know, there was this um, um, uh, uh, this guy named Darnell and Dino, who was now volume 10. And we just used to um, get in the cypher and just, to, you know, rhyme with each other and stuff like that. Though. Gotcha. But, um, do you yeah, ever, man. Do you ever look at, like, those times, like, being in middle school, you were there with basically all the soul assassins. And do you ever look at it and, like, we went around the world together? Like, is it, does it, it ever? It was weird, Craig. It was like the way Happy, my manager, you know, Happy Walters, the way he told us, I was just sitting at home and he was like, um, there's a bus waiting for you at the Hollywood Bowl, you know, yeah. so we, we guys got you a tour. But I thought it was just like maybe a week or something or, yeah. or something. Because <laughs> like, man, the, to, cause, it's to wind it up for like two months. Because to, to people now, <laughs> I mean, like there is a, there is a perceivable path to hip-hop greatness to be successful in it but like it, when i get there <laughs> alchemist and fucking scotty khan the hooligans yeah and they're like um they, they got these eyes worried eyes and they go um cypress and house won't let us on their bus do we can we run with you and i go yeah of course i was like I don't, you, know, we could, you know what i'm saying if you want to share a tour bus with me it's okay you know what i mean yeah and um, I liked it, man, because at the time there wasn't PS nothing, there wasn't mm. internet, there wasn't Nokia, there wasn't Apple, iPad, nothing. And Scotty Khan had Nintendo NES, Street Fighter. Hours of fun. Hey, you know what I'm Fight. saying? And I was young. I didn't even have my first girlfriend. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I was still a virgin, bro. So on tour. they threw me on there, and yeah. bro. Oh, they corrupted me. <laughs> yeah, all the monsters, you know, created Sun Doobie. What was that like? When 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 would you say Sun Doobie was created? Um, like, is there a moment when I had to tell the hooligans they had to leave the tour bus room? Yeah, because they were young. Yeah, they were only fucking thirteen, fourteen, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, they were. They were super young, young, bro. So I couldn't. Um, but I I I feel bad to this day. Don't talk about that. All right, talk about it, Doobie. I t we had these strippers from um, Washington, and I just wanted to just, you know, you just show Scotty. I did, but Scotty's now an actor. He's doing Hawaii Five-0. His dad, you know, yeah. James Kahn. I mean, Scotty. And I, I, I took, I, I, t I told the girls to show Scotty what we see in the strip club. Okay. You know. Give him a little show. Just show, a yeah. private room show. Yeah. You're going to cut this, right? 
Don't, because I didn't you know just, <laughs> hey, that's it, though. Sun Doobie. You know, I had to. Sun Doobie. It, I, I mean, it, it's those moments, especially in the- The, the in-betweens. You know, that in-between. Well, especially like in the early 90s, though. Like, that's, it, you're going to get introduced to it as a young man one way or another. And it's, <laughs> it's just so happy I just don't want the Lord to hold that over my head, but- I'm just trying, hey, dog, it was, it was hip-hop. Have you ever talked to Scotty about it? You know, I'm so scared to because every time he sees me, he has this fucking shit grin and big smile on his face. Like, <laughs> He's probably Doobie, like, you thank opened, you, you turned the lights on for me. You know? Thank you. It all started that day well, on the Well, when I seen him, the last time I seen him, we were at Swingers. I was with Rob Aston from The Transplants. Yeah. And I, I, was, I was, my attention was towards Rob. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And you know, man, when you got two, when you got two, fucking white celebrities it's fucking hard bro it's fucking and they're both trying to like doobie and my both my my shirt is going this way my shirt's going help me i don't know what to do. i'm in the twilight want, zone they both want your uh your credibility spielberg, or what is it scorsese spielberg scorsese the palma a coppola the palma coppola it's like uh, fuck man i feel like the gingerbread man they're about to rip me apart like warm bread <laughs> You know, but yeah. they had fun. Yeah. yeah. So on that tour, you became Sun Doobie. Um, I don't. I don't want. I don't want to talk about the Porno King. Um, <laughs> oh. But <laughs> I don't want to talk about. It. But w did you ever want to be in like films? Like, was that a lane that you wanted to pursue? Everything was by accident. Gotcha. I kid you the fuck not, man. My life is like fucking like uh, according to Garp. Yeah, mm. it's a cr crazy because you know I, I just. Like I said, the energy in the room, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what it is. And I don't know what it is. I just try to, you know, tell people I'm not a, I, I'm not a gangster, but I do make people nervous mm -hmm. and I get it. And, and I just try, but, but I'm, I'm lighthearted. But when people talk to me, they go, ah, oh, I'm staying with dudes. Yeah. Fuck you. I'll go with dudes. So I that opened doors for you. Yeah. It did. Yeah. You know, and, and plus you and me have been in the hood and we've just been a lot and seen a lot. And you and me have just, like know how to avoid stuff by looking at the ground oh yeah you know what i'm saying yeah if you want trouble you can find and it it'll be real right easy. here because you know how the devil don't waste yeah. no time and it'll be right here and you, you know you just got you know you just got that big ass royalty check and now you just got to just humble yourself and just yeah it's one of those royalty checks you got to use the restroom because it's so big and, and the devil's the right in your face, and you don't know why this energy's right here. Yeah. So you know, but you do know, but but you ain't going there. And yeah. you're just like, all right. I stay out of the heat. I stay out of the trouble. I see how to do the game now. It's all about avoiding. Yep. Craig allergic to jail. That's it. Avoid. <laughs> just avoid. <laughs> oh, me about avoid that. it all. You know, but I'm saying because, you know, when you're in the streets, you know, and you got your heat and you got all this shit and muzzle and you 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 think you got it all crisscross and move through. But guess what? When you're in the streets, you're not tactical. You're not SWAT. You're not none of that. You're not military. Anybody can get None touched. of that shit. Anybody's a target. None of that shit. Because you and me, we from that hood. We from that darkness. You see what I'm saying? Yet yeah, we're not dark like that. Because I'm You see what I'm saying? It. So when you know that, yep. this means that you a chosen one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what this message is really for, the chosen ones. You Talk see what I'm it. saying? Yeah. And when you're going through it, when you know you you got all them brothers and sisters doing you wrong and the relatives is doing you wrong, you a chosen one. Mm. Trust me. It's going, it's not gonna be forever. Don't worry, it's gonna lighten up. You're gonna get up out of that. And trust me, man, when God gives you your space, when he gives yeah. you your peace, you can't describe it with words. Mm. You can't. And that, and it's dope, man, because everything is out of balance. You got your hip hop, you got your bank account, and you got your bitches. But that's how you do it. You see what I'm saying? That's coming from Sun Doobie. You see what I'm saying? So that's it right there. Hilarious. And you keep it positive and you stay positive. Yeah. There it is. Oh, shit. Uh, do you have there any, speaking of positive and in, in, in the shit, uh, any Tupac story? Oh, man. I got a Tupac story, man. Um, Tupac was just the humblest dude. This is before he got shot. This was Brenda's got a baby, Tupac. 
But yeah, thank you. Brenda's got a baby too. Park Digital Underground just going in. Yeah. Um, he had just got his deal with Interscope and he just did strictly for my niggas. Mm -hmm. And he was um dating Madonna at the time. And he was very close to Everlast. I don't think I ever knew that. And we were at the Ritz Theater and ever um 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 a funk that Master Flex was DJing that and Clark Kent. And um it was just one of those um um Def Jam parties because they were showcasing Onyx that uh, night and we was backstage funk dubious we was new bow wow wow i was there to shoot, i was there to shoot my video mtv we were like their little ba mtv baby glenn ribble and uh, he was our director and um you know we're chilling and i'm sitting down and i'm just chilling because i'm just like wow i can't believe my life right now and guess who comes in park and everlast and they're talking Pac rolling the blunt and he's in there with stretch from live squad you know who Stretch, Stretch is Life from Squad. Live Squad, Tommy Boy? Nice. Live Squad, Heartless. You know, that's my boy, Stretch. Uh -huh. And um, anyway, Stretch knew who I was. He was like, Doobie. And he saw me and shook my hand. And, you know, I, I just, you know, just wanted to say, Pac, I was there. But he already knew. And I was just sitting there with him in Everlast. And it was just really cool, man, to see how he talked. He didn't even talk like the way he talked when he came out of jail because uh, he didn't even have that. He didn't even have that. You know, none of what, you know what, what I'm talking difference? about. Like, I mean, cause I'm, I, we all know the difference, but like, what did you see? Jail. The jail was in him. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I know how to get my jail on. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He you, had, he knew how to get peacock. his jail on. You gotta be the, like when he did strictly for my niggas, yeah. he was doing it, but I don't think he understood what he was really doing. Right. When he came out of jail, he saw some he shit. He understood. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because I could hear it in the tone of his voice. You understand what I'm talking about? He know. Do we leave it? Leave it alone. He know. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's that voice. You got to yeah. listen to the God. You know what I mean? That's in you. Yeah. So, man, and and when you when I heard him how he talked to Everlast, he was in his you know what I mean? <laughs> but when he got shot, we got him out of jail. And when it was Pac coming and jumping on a death row, it's you aggressive. could hear it. He understood. Yeah. Then he got it. But when he was before that, you know, when we rap about the streets, I don't think people fully understand what the streets really is. The streets is the unknown. Mm. That's what the streets is. I like that. You hear streets what I'm saying? No. Thank you. That's where we came from, nigga. I mean, from but LA why, to but Brooklyn. why you say unknown? Like from Brooklyn to LA, back, and also Chicago to Houston, yeah, Dallas, San Antonio, and then we're not even talking DC, Miami, Atlanta. Oh man, DC, Miami, Memphis. Atlanta, that's, some, that's a different degree of Winston of Salem, Memphis, North Kakalaka, yeah. Greenville, South Kakalaka. But why? Why do you use the word unknown? Uh, we're not even. Uh, you ain't even in touch, Detroit. We ain't even touched Ohio, Cleveland. Yeah. Come on, because Milwaukee. because because what we are accustomed to in New York and LA is not there. Mm. That's not there. Options. Options. Yep. You see what I'm saying? And you don't know what you don't know what's what's the um what's the pH level on their darkness. You see what I'm saying? Now we talk because it, it's always hood. the ones that won't look at the you. The pH in the eye. level on their darkness. You see what I'm saying yeah. on on their corruption. You don't know how 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 deep the rabbit hole goes. Especially when you go somewhere like Arkansas, you think everything's sweet. And then <laughs> and then you, you, you the homie the homie take you to the trap, and then the homies Man, and then the different. homie leave you at the trap. And you go, where See, the I ain't never go? had that. I ain't, praise God. Uh, I ain't never <laughs> disappear on you. I ain't never had that, thank God. Like you see Lonzo what I'm saying? on training. I've day. been through all that. Oh, my you God. You see, and it gets, and I can go darker, but I'm not yeah. going to save that no, for the next all good. interview. It's all good. I'll say that for, <laughs> did good. you hear me? I got, he got nervous. He said, no, no. No, he said, we don't need that. Good. Do we, do we? We're going to keep it light and fresh. It, it, it's too raw for, fresh for camera. It's too raw for the camera. That's, all right, all right. That's our other show. <laughs> so that's it, Greg. Right yeah. there. So let you know that the Funk Dubious, we we got long ties mm -hmm. with, with, with power. We got long ties with power. Gotcha. Power recognizes power. So what's, what's the... I guess the most jubilant or the most uh the happiest time during I guess the like the bow wow wow the the four to five years after that came out. I kid you not. I kid you not. Um 
I think it was it was Cam. Cam, Cam the rapper? Cam the rapper. Uh-huh. He just came out of uh nowhere and it was just good seeing him again. Yeah. Yeah, just to see Cam. Um he, he, it was just he was strong. His mm-hmm. energy is just strong. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um I, I missed him. We go back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um you know him and his cousin Solo, yeah, man, just back in the days, and it was just good seeing them. And when I saw him, where I was at in life was a good spot. You know, um, it was just weird because um, I had finished doing Rock On, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, Ricky Harris, yeah. um, Tadao, you know, a uh, Snoop Dogg and the Dog Pound, and um, Daz, um, you know, um, doing Papi Chulo and everything mm-hmm. like that. And um, I, I met a lot of um, good people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Corrupt, Superfly, um, and um, just um, L.A. hip hop was just strong. Coolio, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Man, you know what I'm saying? We all came yeah. up together, Dove C. You know, we all wow. came up together, the same clubs, everything on um, the same. Yeah. Um, the Good Life, Hollywood Life, Paradise 24, Florentine Gardens. It's all over L.A. All over LA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So seeing all of that, all of these people the peanuts, make it up. Was Cam, peanuts, Cam the is from LA? Huh? Cam is from LA? Um, Cam. Cam um Watts. Yeah. Gotcha. Cam from Watts. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. Watts is a whole other place because when I when I was um with Cam, um, that's when that's kind of when um the brothers were there, but the the Spanish were just starting to gentrify in, in Watts, right? In there now, it's right. all Spanish Watts. Yeah. See, I ain't even been over there. You see, I uh, bet you know. I know the history. Yeah. I've been. The, I was there. That I know the timeline, the lineage. Got you. Yeah. Got you. you so, know? like, I guess going back to a, a question before, like seeing everybody that you were in middle school with come up. You have that same feeling like watching Dub C Cam. Dude, all it's people. hard, man, because you know, um, I it, you know when you when you with whether it's some Kryptongans or some Blood Samoans, you have mm. to gauge it. Your range has got to be like an actor, mm. and you just gotta because you be, you re, you remind yourself you've been around the world ten times, yeah. so you gotta just. But you is know? it crazy watching everybody's success? Insane. I mean. To see corrupt Fred Reck do his album come from Gardena High and just see that. The same thing with Snoop. The same thing with Tony G from K-Day. The same thing from Ice T from Radiotron. The same thing from King T from World on Wheels. The same thing from Julio G um, and and um, Joe Cooley and uh, uh, Rodney O at Skateland. Wow. The same thing. Man, don't make, don't, don't. Just don't. Just don't. Yeah, Doobie's. I'm a real one. Yeah. Yes, you are. Look, man, thank you so much for coming. Love uh, you, Craig. I love you, man. You're the best, man. Good interview, brother. Yeah, fuck all yeah. All good. Thank you for coming through. Again, Word. this is Fresh Era Talks. We'll be back next Stop time. Stop playing with him, man. Hit him. Quit playing. Get him. Uh, I, want, I want Nas. Come on the show. <laughs> Get him. Right.